Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Hey everyone, welcome to this Christmas special episode of Retro S. Sponsored command and Ninja Ninja T Federal Disabled Universe here. And it's a Christmas present to you guys, we turn the clock back to the in 1998 with some old school classic PT platforming action. Is this game an all time classic? Or should this game be lost forever in the pages of gaming history? So crack open the eggnog, let's open the mince pies, and above all, let's find out. Format creators Epic Games' Jazz Shack Rabbit series was to PC gaming like Mario was to Nintendo. The first entry of the series was released exclusively for the PC in 1994. A quick fun fact for you guys, did you know that the original Jazz Jack Rabbit actually contained in-game advertising for the Gravis gamepad? The gamepad itself had a small hole in the center of its D-pad. This allowed a small metal peg to be screwed in to make a makeshift analog stick. After all, platformers was always best to be played with a controller even to this day. The game takes place after the events of the original game of the series. Our protagonist Jazz rescued Princess Eva Elong from Devon Chell and his turtle terrorists. But he made one minor oversight. Devon stolen an emerald that was originally to be used in Eva's wedding ring. Don't! Unfortunately that emerald was supposed to be powering a time machine allowing Devon to rewrite history. Jazz, his brother Spaz, and his sister Lori embarks on an epic adventure through the various time zones to stop Devon, relocate the Emerald, and marry Jazz's sweetheart in time for the reception. The actor's ability scores are as follows. To kick things off, visibility give it 10 in multiplayer, but there will be guys more on that in a minute. The colours of each character can be fully customised. That way, a player with a visual impairment can customize whichever color scheme is more suitable for their impairment. In the single player element of the game, there are no color coded elements that can cause an issue for a colorblind player. Next up, on ability, give it 10. There is no spoken dialogue in this game. Back in the day, imagination had to fill in the blinds. So, a player with a hearing impairment will be able to play this game with no issues. Next up, mobility has got a sky high 11. When using a keyboard, you can rebind the keys to suit your impairment. However, if you use the JJ2 Plus mod, which is available in the GOG version, there is controller support right out of the box. Better still, the button layouts can be fully customized when you are playing with a controller. Just remember to set your Xbox One or PS4 controller as your preferred controller in your control panel and you're good to go. Gameplay gave it 10. In short, this game is criminally underrated. The sheer amount of content you will be getting when you buy this game from GOG, this game is excellent value for money. If you have family or guests over, you can play this game split screen co-op or deathmatch with up to 4 players for some good old fashioned family fun. You can also play online through jj2online.com. As I have previously stated, there are 3 characters to pick from, Jazz, Spaz and Laurie. Each character has to work their own unique special abilities. For example, Spaz is the only character out of the 3 that can double jump. Plus, he can use a Kung Fu style kick, which propels him forward, taking out any enemy which is stupid enough to be in his way. As with all platformers, the game rewards you for taking your time. For example, there are secret lares which are only accessible when you collect a certain amount of coins, which are hidden in the level. There is also sections in certain levels in which you have to break a nearby object find a key or switch to progress. The multiplayer elements, I'll be the online or split screen, add additional lifespan to a reasonably long game. Due to the game's age, it doesn't require a lot of firepower in your PC to run this. In summary, Jazz Jack Rabbit 2 is a perfect blend of the traditional platformers which were prevalent in the 90s, mixed in with run and gun mechanics with an arsenal of wacky weapons to boot. These include flamethrowers, homing missiles, and time bombs to name a few. 
the sheer variety of walking levels ranging from medieval castles, happy heavens, and colonial era settlements to name a few. You will be stuck on this game for hours and hours on end. So if you're a platformer enthusiast and is looking for a cheap, low-spec 2D platformer to play with family or by yourself, this game is highly recommended. And the overall score is a massive 102.5%. This is Bronson Commander 1990 signing off and I will see you guys in the next review and have a very Merry Christmas.